Welcome, my name is Tim, and in this short video, I'm gonna show you the proper procedure for troubleshooting an open low water cutoff switch on a gas boiler. Now to begin with, we need to turn the thermostat to call for heat. So click on this little orange circle, which will turn the selector switch to the heat mode. This will also turn up the temperature setting above the room temperature. Now you're gonna to need to refer to the procedure guide after each step. So go up top here and click OK. Next, we're going to remove the cover from the boiler. Click OK once you've done that. Now we want to do a brief inspection to see if the burners are firing and if the circulator is running. And we can see here that although we have a pilot flame lit, there's no burner operation. So we're going to click No up here at the top. Next, we're going to take a look at the circulator pump. And we can see that the circulator is running, as evidenced by these spinning blue arrows. Now you can also use a clamp on ammeter that is capable of measuring fractional amperage to verify that you have a current draw on the circulator. But we can see it's running here, so we're gonna click yes. Next, we wanna see if the vent damper is open. Now again, the vent damper closes off the flue passageway on each off cycle, and it will drive itself open when there's a call for heat so that the combustion gases can actually go up the vent. Now, when the vent damper is open, the shaft right here in the center would be vertical, as it's shown here, so we know that it's open. If it's closed, the shaft will be flat or horizontal. So, yes, we verified the vent damper is open. Now, the pilot's lit. We've already established that. Our next step is to look for any loose connections at the gas valve, as well as other places. And it doesn't appear that there's any loose connections. All the connections are secure, so there's no loose wires at the gas valve. Now, before we proceed to measuring voltage, I want to take out the wiring diagram here. Click on this bottom left wiring diagram icon, and the diagram will come up here on the right side of the page. So we know the circulator is running. That means these contacts are closed, but the gas valve is not opening. Now, what could be the cause of that? Well, obviously, it could be the gas valve. It could also be any of these safety switches, the low water cutoff, the rollout switch, the spill switch, or possibly the vent damper end switch shown right here. Now, just because the motor of the vent damper is operating, we've already verified that, it doesn't mean that the end switch isn't faulty. Uh, that end switch is there to prove that the damper actually drove open. So we need to check all these components, and probably the easiest place to start would be at the gas valve. So we're gonna start by measuring for 24 volts at the gas valve, coil, or solenoid connections, placing the meter leads at the glowing orange hotspots. And we can see that we have no voltage to the gas valve. So the gas valve is not our culprit here. And just a note, if you look on the wiring diagram, you can see the placement of your meter leads on the diagram. And you see that they're across the gas valve here. And this will really help you to use the diagram in order to find the proper locations for your meter leads. So we don't have 24 volts, so we're going to click no on the procedure guide. Our next step is to measure across the vent damper end switch. And in order to do this, we're gonna to need to place one lead on the high limit red wire connection right here. And when we do that, you'll see it move on the diagram. You see the end switch in the vent damper doesn't have any direct connections on it where you can measure voltage. So we're gonna to have to measure at the outlet of the high limit and at the inlet of the spill switch to actually measure across this end switch. So once you've done that, click OK. We're gonna place our other lead at the spill switch connection here, the orange glowing hotspot. And again, you can see our meter leads placed here. We're going right across that switch. And we've got zero volts, which verifies, hey, that end switch is closed. So the vent damper assembly is not our problem here. So click zero on the procedure guide. And next, we're gonna check the spill switch. We're gonna go right in order here. So are there any loose wires first? Well, you can zoom in or you can rotate to inspect the connections, and it doesn't appear that there's any loose connections. So no, there's no loose wires on the spill switch. Now we're gonna measure across the spill switch. Now remember, if you get a reading to 24 volts, that's a difference in potential. That indicates that the spill switch is open. You should measure zero volts across it if it's closed. So let's drop each of our meter leads across the contacts of the spill switch. And we measure zero volts. And again, this verifies that the spill switch is closed. And again, you can look on the diagram and see that we're measuring right across the spill switch as evidenced by the placement of the meter leads here. So we'll click zero here. Our next step is to check the rollout switch. 
the first thing I would do is kind of just inspect for any loose connections. And you again, you can zoom in and you can rotate. And here's our rollout switch right in the front of the burner compartment. And all the connections are secure. So no, there's no loose connections. The next step is to place your meter leads across the contacts of the flame rollout switch. So drop the meter leads on each of the orange glowing hotspots. And just like before, if we measure zero volts, that means the switch is closed. If the switch was open, again, we'd have a difference in potential and we would measure 24 volts here. But we verified that the rollout switch is good. So we're gonna click zero here. And our next step is to go to the low water cutoff. Now, many modern low water cutoffs have an indicator light stating with that when they're off on low water condition. And this component is there to really protect the boiler's heat exchanger against potential dry firing of the boiler, which could damage the heat exchanger itself. So it's a safety device that's pretty important. We're gonna click on the cover to remove it. And we have our contacts here. Now again, most of the modern ones have an indicator light telling you when it's off on low water cutoff. Next, we're gonna just take a brief inspection for any loose connections on the low water cutoff. Uh, again, you rotate and zoom in so you get a better look and all connections appear to be secure here. So no, there's no loose wires. Our next step is actually to measure voltage across the contacts of the low water cutoff. So take your voltmeter and we're going to drop each of the leads on the glowing orange hotspots at the low water cutoff. And again, you can see this on the wiring diagram that we're actually placing those leads right across the low water cutoff. But if you notice here, we've got 24 volts, which means we have a difference in potential. Now, what does that mean? Well, it means we have 24 volts available to the left side of the low water cutoff or the black wire, but we don't have any power going out of the right connection or the red wire. And this verifies that the low water cutoff is in fact open. So we're gonna click 24 volts on our menu up here at the top or our procedure guide. And I'm gonna store the wiring diagram away temporarily here. And once we've done this, we need to inspect for proper water level in the boiler, meaning usually the low water cutoff will open when there's a low water condition. So we wanna look at the boiler pressure temperature gauge and ensure that we have adequate pressure in the boiler. And if you look at this scale at the bottom in blue, you can see we have about 12 PSI of pressure on this inner ring here. So there's plenty of water in the boiler. Uh, this would most likely mean that the low water cutoff switch itself is faulty. Now to replace the low water cutoff switch, simply click on it and click replace on the menu. And this solves the problem, but be sure to observe one full cycle of operation with the boiler to make sure all of their components are functioning properly. And once you've done that, go up to the residence just to verify that heat is being delivered to the residence. And we can see that from this red graphic coming off this piece of baseboard radiation here. So everything seems to be working just great now. Now remember, you can always click this top left tab to review any of the steps in the procedure. Good luck on your future service calls and I'll see you back here soon. Thanks for watching. Do you want to try 3D simulations and VR HVAC training yourself? then visit interplaylearning.com to start a free trial today.